Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa sallallahu wa barak ala al-ashraf al-anbiya wa mursaleen nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Amma ba'd. Bismillah. Just answer a couple of the questions the brothers put forward. Um, the first one here that I read is uh, the mention in whoever, the, the mention to the hadith or reference in the hadith whoever sends a salutation upon once upon the, Allah, uh, the messenger of Allah then Allah will send it upon him tenfold. So uh, what is meant by that is the statement Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Naam in the mention of the messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the person mentions the statement itself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Naam. And so this is what is meant, that when a person says the statement, when mentioning the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi when a person says the statement, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then Allah Ta'ala will uh, bestow upon him this tenfold. Naam. And so this is, this is what is meant by that, that this hadith. Allah Ta'ala knows best. Um, this next question mentions, what is advice that can be given to the shabab um, who are mocked by others for implementing the sunnah? You mentioned to the shabab, I mentioned to anyone else that, f that feels any form of haraj, hardship or embarrassment even for following the sunnah, that within the sunnah, the, sun the first and foremost, you have the statement of Imam al-Bab Hari, his beginning of his sharh sunnah. He mentions Islam is a sunnah and a sunnah is Islam. And no doubt within the affair of Islam is Izza wa Sharf. Within the affair of Islam is honor for the one that practices it. And so a person should recognize the honor that is found within their practicing of Islam regardless of what another individual may say in relation to that. Because a person's opinion should not take precedence over the Sunnah and Islam and Deen. And a person's opinion is deficient. A person's opinion may be affected by desires, may be affected by emotions. However, the Deen, Islam and the Sunnah is one of perfection. And it's perfect revelation. That's the first of it. Secondly, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentions Bada Islam al Gharib wa Sayyid al Gharib kama Bada. He mentions sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Islam began as something strange and shall return as something strange as it began. And so return as something strange as it began. Fatuba ila ghuraba. So glad tidings be to the strangers. So we find the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam giving glad tidings to the ones that are upon that way. That are the strangers. The ghuraba. Giving glad tidings to these individuals. And so, when the Messenger of Allah mentions such a praise for those that follow the Sunnah, a person should find comfort in that, in that fact. Likewise, you have the statement of Imam al Uzai, where he mentions. عَلَيْكُمْ بِأَثَارَ السَّرَفِ وَإِنْ رَفَضَ قَنَّاسِ Upon you is adhered to the athar, the narration of the salaf, even if the people reject you. For our actions are for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We wish for our actions to be accepted by Allah. And we do not wish for our action to be accepted by the people. 
the one that is mukhlis, he seeks that. He seeks the acceptance of Allah Azza wa Jal. For indeed it's only Allah who's the one that is able in reality to reward him for the actions that he performs. Naam. The next question here is in relation to the adqar of the morning and evening. Naam, in the morning and evening, whether the adqar should be um, read once uh, or what, at the time of once the time of fajr and asr begin, or. And, and the person still hasn't prayed the salah yet. Rather, the most important thing that the person does is he establishes the salah as early as he possibly can. He establishes the salah as early as he possibly can. And so, whilst the adhkar are actions of khair, these are actions of tatawa. These are voluntary acts. The say adhkar, Whilst the salah is one which is an obligation. And the salah fi waqtiha is an obligation. As Allah Ta'ala mentions, inna salat kanat al mu'minina kitabam ka mawkuta. That indeed the salah has been prescribed upon the believers, has been legislated for the believers at prescribed times. So a person, advice for an individual should be that they should seek to pray the salah of that time first and foremost, before anything else. And likewise as well, they should seek to pray that salah in jama'ah as well. For the men. And as for the um, the adhkar, then they can be done and mentioned after that. <coughs> Allah Ta'ala knows best. Question here says concerning the punishment of the grave, will those who are able to answer the questions which are, are, are asked to them um, know whether they are going to paradise or hellfire, or will they who answer the questions still have a chance of going to the hellfire? Well Allahu A'lam Allahu A'lam in relation to the 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 tafasil of this of this affair, the details of the affair of the graves and the questioning. However, we do know that those that are people, those that are, that are people of Khair, that their graves, after the questioning, their graves will be made wide and vast and spacious for them. And to so know that this is an indication of where their abode will be in the Akhirah. Whilst the opposite is true for the one, <coughs> now for the one that is not upon good that the graves will be constricted for them and again this is an indication of what may happen to them in the akhirah as for the details then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best as for the next question says uh, sending the, the citation upon the Prophet is this an obligation when he, when he is mentioned um, if we, was, if we were to say it's not an obligation, then we say that it is an action that is highly, highly recommended. We say it's highly recommended to send the salutation from the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he's mentioned for the fact that he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has mentioned that great reward for it. Likewise, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned, إِنَّ اللَّهُ وَمَلَائِكْتِ يُصَلُّونَ لَا النَّبِيِّ يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا so Allah Ta'ala has mentioned this affair as well. Indeed, Allah Ta'ala and the Malaika send the salutations upon the, the, the Nabi Sallallahu Oh, you believe? Naam. Sallu alayhi wa sallam wa taslima. the peace and salutation upon him. This is a command from Allah. That's the first and foremost. And the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he himself mentioned the one that does not do so. <coughs> Described them as being the, the one who is stingy. Bakhil. 
And so you understand, no doubt, at the very least, that the one that does not do so, this is not a praiseworthy affair. And that which is better is then for them to do so. And this from the affairs which are light upon the tongue of Allah Ta'ala knows best and is encouraged that they do so. This question says, what door do you want to enter in Jannah? Or Allahu A'alam, the door where someone enters when they enter into Jannah, no, that is based upon their actions in the dunya. And based upon whichever one, or which, whichever one is, is from the affairs of the, or reflective upon their actions in this dunya, Allah Ta'ala knows best. Now, I think this is the asking about the burials and they removed um, diseased bodies after a period of time to make space for others' burials. And what happens to the bodies once they're removed? Are they disposed of or buried again? It's a question basically in, uh, in Medina, you know, when they put a buried there, I, I heard they take them out. But the question is because uh, is a ruling allowed and it is allowed. Where are the bones removed to? Is it buried again or? Mm. Okay. From that which is uh, from that which Allah Adam is known is that they're not removed, and rather, the because of the the graves, the way that the graves are, are are spaced, is that there's always going to be more space or enough space for more graves, because over time, when uh, the bodies that are decomposed, it only leaves one. Piece of the bone, the, the, which is known as that, the tailbone. It's something which is mentioned as well in, 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 in the Nasus. Now, this is, this, these are the bones that are left over. So, when, due to the fact that there's only one piece of bone left over, this means that there's more space for the other bodies to come regularly. And um, Allahu A'lam, in relation to the effect of removing of the bodies, I don't believe this, this is something that actually occurs. So, they don't, they don't remove the bodies? No, that, that's not that I know of. Allahu A'lam. No. How do I give dawah to a non-Muslim to become Muslim? Um, to give dawah to a non-Muslim and to become Muslim, the, the first thing you call them to is Tawheed. And you relate everything back to Tawheed. You may find that you discuss with a person that is not Muslim uh, an affair which is, as they say, contentious or controversial. So they may say... Why do women have to cover up like this? Or why, do, why are men allowed four wives? Or why is this a case? And why does Islam promote this? Or why does Muslims say this? And every single issue that you bring up, you should always bring back to the Tawheed of Allah. Always bring back to the affair of worship Allah Ta'ala alone with no partners. Because this is why we've been created. And this is why we are here. And there's no other reason behind our creation than Allah Ta'ala knows best. So you set that as the basis. And there's no point discussing any other affairs, any other furu', any other affairs that branch off from that. If a person cannot understand and affirm the affair of Tawheed, there's no benefit for a person to say, I understand why a man can have four wives, for example. But he doesn't understand and affirm the right of Allah. A Tawheed, him for the worship alone. So a person when giving da'wah should always begin with Tawheed and affirm Tawheed and make sure that is the first thing that they're calling to, as we mentioned in the, in the lecture. Now when, when his Prophet said, Mu'adhan al-Jabba to Yemen, he sent him to the people and the first thing, told him the first thing to call him to is the shahada of La ilaha illallah, a Tawheed. Likewise, the ayah 
ولقد بعثنا في كل أمة رسول أن نأمر الله ونشتري بالط ونشتري بالطاقوت. I said to every nation a messenger to worship Allah Taala alone and stay and stay away and avoid the false deities. All of these affairs begin with the Tawheed of Allah. Everything else after that can be discussed. It can be discussed. But Tawheed has to be affirmed first and foremost, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala knows best. Um, and the final question here says, why is the Christians and the Jews upon the wrong religions? I, what, I'm guessing what is wrong with the religion of Christianity and Judaism? Let me say that in relation to that, first and foremost, they are not upon Tawheed. Nothing can be correct except that it's upon Tawheed. So uh, the, the Christians, they will say that Jesus is Allah. Naam. They say Jesus is Allah. Or he's the, or they have the belief in the Trinity, that he's one of three. Allah is one of three. So in of that, directly, they are rejecting that Allah is one. They are rejecting the Tawheed of Allah. Again, the Christians will direct their ibadah and their, their dua and call upon Jesus. Again, this is something which is opposing to Tawheed. When, I, when we embark upon dua or any form of ibadah, that's for Allah Ta'ala alone. As the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentions, a dua huwa al-ibadah. Dua, it is ibadah. So when a person calls in dua and supplicates, they supplicate to Allah Ta'ala alone. Likewise, you find with the Christians, they will state that Isa is the Ibn Allah, is the son of Allah. And this again opposes Tawheed. For indeed, if a person was to have a son, then they're no longer unique. There's someone else or another individual that has some of their attributes. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is unique in his attributes. And he's alone in his attributes. Likewise, us as humans, we have children, we have sons, we have daughters, we have, we have offspring. For a need, for a hajjah, for a hajjah. In order to continue mankind, now we need to have offspring. In order to continue our lineage, we need to have offspring. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al hay la yamut. Allah ta'ala is the ever living and never dies. And so it, uh, it opposes any need and the tawheed of Allah ta'ala in order for him to have a son, as they say. As for the Jews, then they will make the same statement about Uzair, him being Ibn Allah. Likewise, from the religion of the Yahud is that they reject the adillah that came to them, the proof that came to them. And this is why they have been described as the maghdubi alayhim. They have been described as the maghdubi alayhim, those that have earned the anger of Allah. They have earned the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala due to the fact that they were aware of the truth. The truth had come to them and they did not act upon that truth that came to them. Whilst the Christians of the Dalun are those that went astray because they acted without knowledge. Knowledge did not come to them whilst they still acted. Wallahu ta'ala, a'lam, wallahu musta'an, jazakum ala khaira, barakullahu fikum, wa sallallahu wa barak ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Jazakum ala khaira.